Hi friends, it's time for another episode of Questions for Cole. I'm Cole, it's March 17th, 2021, and this is our 44th episode. Oh, and happy St. Patrick's Day. I don't actually own many green articles of clothing, as is the custom. I did find a couple of things, hats actually. I have my old green hat from when I was a member of the Brandon Cloverleafs baseball team. It's a favorite hat of mine, although it's kind of out of shape right now. And maybe better for the season, I have this hat that was in our children's and grandchildren's dress-up closet. And I don't know if it's an Irish hat or a Robin Hood hat or a leprechaun hat or what kind of hat it is, but it's, uh, it's quite nice. Those are my green hats for St. Patrick's Day. I have two questions about St. Patrick's Day today. One for me and one for you. First, my question for you. On two different calendars that I own, one on the wall and one in my phone, I saw St. Patrick's Day listed as today, March 17th, as usual. But also listed was another St. Patrick's Day with Canada in brackets on Monday. I thought that was strange. As far as I know, here in Canada, we celebrate or at least recognize St. Patrick's Day on March 17th every year, just like everyone else. So I'm not sure why these two calendars had it listed for Canada specifically on Monday, March 15th this year. If anyone has an answer, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just keep thinking about it and thinking about it and I won't get anything else done all week. Thanks in advance. Now the question for me came this week and it is, Cole, why is St. Patrick a saint? Good question. We have a lot of these saints in our culture. We say their names all the time and we use their names for all sorts of different things. St. Patrick's Day, St. Mary's Road in Winnipeg, St. James Neighborhood, St. John's Newfoundland, St. Stephen's Broadway United Church. Some people have a St. Bernard dog. I went to St. Andrew's College. There is jolly old St. Nicholas, etc., etc. So these saints have become part of our language, but I'm not sure how much thought we really give to why, or who these people were. Well, today let's focus on St. Patrick. Well, before he was St. Patrick, he was just Patrick, born in Britain in the 5th century, the 5th century long time ago. He was taken from his family by Irish raiders and was made a slave. He spent six years as a herdsman and turned more and more to his faith during that time. He then escaped from his master and sailed back to Britain and was finally reunited with his family. But he felt somehow called by God to return to Ireland and to bring the Christian faith to the people there. So he returned and spent his life sharing the gospel baptizing and confirming and writing. His last years were spent in Northern Ireland. That's a very brief synopsis of Patrick's life. Now, how did he become a saint? Well, sainthood is bestowed on people by the Catholic Church, and there are a number of different qualifications or requirements having to do with living a virtuous Christian life, drawing people to the faith. There's something about miracles, miracles that have occurred when someone prays in the name of the person after their death. There are a number of steps that need to happen before someone is declared a saint. For St. Patrick, there are a number of stories about his life that led to his being declared a saint. It's thought that he may have brought the Latin alphabet to Ireland. In his teachings about Christianity, he incorporated Irish beliefs and symbols, including the shamrock. It's thought that he likely used the shamrock to help explain the concept of the Christian Trinity. And legend says that Patrick cast out all of the snakes in Ireland, although many scientists believe that snakes have never existed in Ireland, so I'm not sure about that one. Of course, similar to St. Valentine and St. Nicholas, our society has taken the original stories of these real people and made them almost completely unrecognizable with the layers of fable and myth not to mention commercialization and nonsense that we've added to them through the years. But there's still an important story about an important person buried underneath all of the shamrock shakes and Irish whiskey and leprechaun memorabilia for sale at the local Dollarama stores at this time of year. 
So whether or not you're wearing green today, whether or not you think Patrick was a saint, you can take a moment to be thankful for all those people who tried to listen to God's calling in their lives and tried to share with others the faith that they tried to live out in their own lives and be thankful for some of the wonderful things that they did in the name of Christ and in the name of God. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Have a good rest of the week, and I'll see you again next time. Oh, and keep sending in your questions. Cole at SelkirkUnitedChurch.ca. See you soon.